and welcome to this week's episode of Did Shakespeare. I'm Cassidy Cash. This week we are taking a look at the history of pillows in Elizabethan England and asking the question, did Shakespeare use a pillow? The word pillow comes from a Middle English word called pillow. I'm not even 100% sure I'm pronouncing that correctly, but it is kind of like But it's the first time the word pillow is used around the 12th century. You may have heard the term going soft, and this actually refers to using a pillow. Apparently, up until about Shakespeare's lifetime, the whole idea of using a pillow was considered dainty or less than manly. And even throughout William Shakespeare's lifetime, it still had this association. Pillows, the soft kind that were stuffed with feathers or straw or made soft for your head to rest on in the bed, were associated with either the super wealthy, like the King of England kind of wealthy, or they were associated with people who were very old, ill, or infirmed. And that's why when you look in paintings from this time period, from the 15th and 16th centuries, anyone that's using a pillow is usually either a pregnant woman in bed, someone dying, or someone giving birth, or someone very old. Sometimes I, wa I was able to find some paintings from the 1400s and 1500s where they were using pillows to sit on, but even in those instances, it was usually old men who needed the extra support. Medieval beds were really simple, and it's where we get the phrase hit the hay, because it was literally a pile of hay and you slept on it. Even during William Shakespeare's lifetime, peasants or people of the lower classes still slept this way. This is how their beds were. It was the only sleeping arrangements that they had. Now, under Henry VIII, he actually passed a law that said only pregnant women could use pillows. Of course, Henry VIII was allowed to use a pillow, but no one else. And so they had this whole time period where it was not only not manly, but it was not allowed to use a pillow. And as William Shakespeare was growing up, now remember he was born in 1564, so around 1580 we have a record of a man who wrote in frustration about this new generation needing feather beds and pillows for the middle class. So apparently using pillows, William Shakespeare was of this young whippersnapper generation who just had everything so pampered for them with the use of their pillows and feather beds. The Elizabethan traveler William Harris wrote that straw pallets covered with a sheet or under coverlets that had a good round log under their heads instead of a bolster or a pillow. If it were so that our fathers or the good man of the house had within seven years after his marriage purchased a mattress or a flock bed and thereto a sack of chaff to rest his head upon, he thought himself to be as well lodged as the lord of the town. And so you can tell that there was this generational gap between William Shakespeare's generation and his parents in terms of what they used to sleep on. William Shakespeare's parents probably would not have had this soft, puffy bed with pillows. It's questionable whether or not William Shakespeare himself actually would have used a pillow. His wife would have, definitely when she was giving birth to their children she would have. Whether or not William Shakespeare would have used a pillow kind of depends on whether he adhered to the generation just before him thinking that pillows were unmanly or if he saw them as a status symbol there are things from william shakespeare's lifetime to give evidence either way they do have pillows on shakespeare's bed at shakespeare birthplace trust so the historians there seem to think it was common enough by william shakespeare's lifetime that they belong on the replicas of his bed Beds that you and I would consider comfortable today were something that only existed for the super wealthy in England. The longest bed to make took months, and this was actually commissioned by Henry VIII 
for his bedroom at Whitehall Palace in the 1530s. There is an inventory of a man from 1582 that includes a bedstead that was dressed up with a wool mattress, feather bed, and bolster, as long, along with white and red blankets. And this represents that it was the super wealthy who had this kind of comfortable, cushioned bed clothing on their bed. Interestingly, beds were also social places. It was not uncommon at all for people to hold meetings from their beds. Now, this was the upper classes of society in England at the time, but they would actually sit in their bed to conduct business meetings because having a bed that was really comfortable and had all of these accoutrements like pillows was a status symbol. So when people had them, they wanted to show them off and they would invite the people they wanted to impress into their bedrooms for their meetings. As well, when you traveled, people at inns would often have large beds for the purpose of putting a lot of people in them. And that's where we get the idea of being a considerate bedfellow. When you traveled and stayed at an inn, you were expected to share a bed with another person. And you had your half, they had their half, and there were rules established about what it meant to be a considerate bedfellow with another traveler. The most famous example from this time period of a super large bed being in Elizabethan England is actually mentioned in Shakespeare's plays. Ben Jonson mentions this as well. But the character of Falstaff in Twelfth Night, Act 3, Scene 2, talks about a bed where it held 15 people. It was called the Great Bed of Ware, and it shows up in this quote. Boys, hush! And as many lie and as will lie in the sheet of paper, although the sheet were big enough for the bed of wear in England, set them down. Falstaff is joking on the number of lies you can fit onto a piece of paper is comparable with the number of people that could fit in the great bed of wear. This was an actual bed in England and it held 15 people. It was one ambitious inn owner's way of getting a little bit more money out of his room for rent. So it seems like most things in Shakespeare's lifetime, using a bed was undergoing its own sort of renaissance during the life of William Shakespeare, including it being a new idea during the life of William Shakespeare to have a comfortable mattress, sheets on your bed, and even a pillowcase was a new idea. Before William Shakespeare's lifetime, most people had what's called a head sheet, which was just a piece of cloth laid over the cushion or whatever it is that you were sleeping on to protect your head. By William Shakespeare's time, they were adding cases to the pillow that are closer to what you would think about today, and they were starting to introduce more cushioned mattresses and blankets and fur-lined coverlets into the beds to make them more comfortable and warm to sleep in. There are 23 references to the word pillow in William Shakespeare's plays, and here are two that show you kind of what William Shakespeare was experiencing in relation to the pillow. In Antony and Cleopatra, he said, have I my pillow left unpressed in Rome? And he's complaining about the fact that he'd rather be back with Cleopatra, and he's left his comfortable bed to go off on the sink. But it's an anachronism because Antony in Rome, during the time the play was set, would not have had this kind of pillow. Soft pillows weren't a thing then. And, but it was a, not only a thing, but kind of a trendy thing during William Shakespeare's life when he wrote this play. And then in Henry V, Shakespeare commits the same anachronism again because he has Henry V talking about a good soft pillow for that good white head. Now, that one may not actually be an anachronism because if your head is white, then that suggests you're an older person. And so a good soft pillow for a good white head makes sense in terms of it. It was an established thing during the life of Henry V, the actual Henry V, to have old people use a pillow because they were usually in need of some extra cushioning. So that is maybe not an anachronism, but it is an interesting reference because I believe the word pillow had been around for a while, but in terms of whether or not it would have been on a bed, that's kind of a Shakespeare thing. That's it for this week. The answer to the question this week is yes, William Shakespeare would have used a pillow.
But it probably wasn't a common thing for William Shakespeare. Having a pillow was one of the several things in his life he probably had because he wanted the status association with having a pillow on his bed. I'm Cassidy Cash. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to learn more about William Shakespeare, please like and subscribe because we're here every week with even more Shakespeare. Don't forget to check out our brand new Experience Shakespeare Digital History Kits. These are like science labs, but for history class. They are activity kits that you can do at home to practice a piece of William Shakespeare's history for yourself. Right now, there's How to Play Naughty, which is a 16th century card game mentioned in Shakespeare's Two Gentlemen of Verona. And in March, we'll be launching the new newest of our experienced Shakespeare history kits with how to make March pain. There's all kinds of good stuff. Find out more at castycast.com slash experience. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.